Hey, long time no see. Um, I just wanted to jump in here and do a brief video, but I want to explain what happened to the October videos real quick, and then we'll talk about what else is coming. Just recently, I had a really bad bug with my uh, computer, and it has something to do with a driver for the video card or whatever, and supposedly they're trying to fix it, and a lot of people have been griping. It only affected computers that were built this one year. I don't know. It sounds really hokey to me. But one of the fixes is they want you to upgrade your operating system. And I'm sorry, but I, I don't think that's necessary. There's surely there's a work away, you know, work around for that. But whatever the case may be, it causes my computer to the screen to go out and you have to completely restart it. So if you're in the middle of editing a video, you lose a lot of ground. In fact, I had a, a video that I posted on my regular channel, did quite a bit of editing. And at the end, I had to completely restart on the editing. It was the third time was the charm. I'll say I lost two versions of that video. That So for me to do a skit style video that I really wanted to do for you guys, I'm going to have to really dedicate some time and I'm probably going to have to render it in small portions and then piece it together. So I just really haven't had the time to do that yet, but I am still doing it. And I'll tell you why I'm still doing it. I bought some of the stuff, some of the props that I needed for that video, and I'm the kind of person that once I've devoted any kind of money, not to mention energy, I'm going to follow through because there's no way I would have bought those things necessarily unless it was just for this video. So that being said, that's the explanation on why I haven't been doing as many videos on my channel or this channel, especially not the October videos I promised you where I was going to go back to doing a skit similar to the zombie skit. So if you're over here and you haven't seen my zombie skit, I posted that on my regular channel and I posted it on here. Um, it's going to be in the vein of that story and I don't want to necessarily say it's a direct sequel, but... Yeah, it, it'll be something to that effect. Okay, let's talk about what I want to actually do in this video. And what I'm going to talk about is something that um, I think about quite often because in the DVD community, it seems like I, I hear more people gripe about this type of case than anywhere um, of any other kind of case that's probably been produced. Uh, and what I'm talking about is, and I'll show it here from the side, I'm going to show a movie that I've shown quite often. Uh, this is uh, Nightbreed. And this version, as far as I know, only exists in this, what they call, snapper case, which was designed about 1996. That's when these started popping up uh, during the very early days. And it was Warner, um, New Line Cinema, and there was like, you know, two or three different companies that worked with this uh, before what came around as what we call the keepsake case, which is the one that's popular. It's the standard plastic case. This has actually got cardboard, and um, these parts here snap out, and uh, this is a generic piece that's the same on every uh, case, and this is the cardboard piece that they put together that makes it unique for each movie. So uh, you can imagine a movie that's basically a lot of cardboard gets beat up pretty bad, and uh, what I notice a lot of people say is it's um, it's a different size than the rest of their movies, so it looks horrible on their shelf. And the DVD collecting community is big on having a display case, of course, because everybody wants that you know that quintessential case you know that reminds you of a kind of I, I think it's like the iconic case that people kind of think of in their mind. Uh, from going to the video store, but it's your own personal library instead of, you know, the public, you know, version of a library or a rental location. Okay, so let's jump into some of these movies, and what I'm going to call this video is these are 10 uh, snapper cases in my collection that I don't hate. I'll just briefly explain that what I mean by that is these are all movies that I love the movie so much that uh, in some cases they don't exist in keep uh, the keep case or the keepsake case or um, for whatever reason I just really like that movie and I'm able to get past my anger for <laughs> snapper cases or snap cases. So let's just go ahead and start with the very first movie I've got here which is Nightbreed. Uh, this is a movie I saw at the movie theater when I was much much younger. This is about 20 years ago. I think this was from like 90, 91, something like that. Um, 
It's got David Cronenberg in it, of all things. Um, so if if you're a David Cronenberg fan, this is him acting, not directing. Um, it's from Clive Barker, the um, based on his book Cabal, and um, it's it's a really interesting movie. I think a lot of people end up um, not liking it for whatever reason because it's not as strong as like Hellraiser, which was really, really popular before this. And I think the studios thought that this would turn into some franchise like Hellraiser, and it didn't. And since then, this movie hasn't got a whole lot of respect. But I always enjoyed it. I love the makeup effects and all the different creatures and everything that's in it. And it's got, you know, a young Craig Sheffer in it before he got really big doing all the movies he's done recently. But, uh, yeah, as you can see here, uh, real interesting pictures of many of the Oh, I, I, it's hard to say what they really are, uh, demon looking things. And some of them are just kind of freaks of nature or whatever, but, uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, this is a movie I never hardly hear about. This is a sealed copy. I just haven't been in the mood to watch it lately, but, uh, I watched this when I was much younger. I rented it and it's called Dogfight, And this is one of River Phoenix's last movies. I don't know how close it is to being his last movie. Don't quote me on that, but, uh, it's River Phoenix and Lily Taylor. And it plays a guy, he's on leave from the military, and they end up having this contest to see who can get the worst date. And they have a bet going. And who's, whoever's date that they bring to this bar for this dance uh, wins a pot of money. And they get bonus points if their date is just really ugly or, you know, whatever. I mean, it, it's kind of crude, but it's in a weird way, it's a very charming movie because... He can't really find a date, and he ends up being with Lily Taylor, and she's just kind of, you know, uh, just a normal girl, you know, not anything, you know, ugly or anything, and he ends up kind of falling for her, so it, it's an interesting movie. I really like it, and it's never talked about anymore. In fact, it's really kind of rare to find this anywhere, but it's called Dogfight. If you ever get a chance, to check it out. I'm not for sure if that's still in production or not, but... Um, this is another one that I've always enjoyed, and my family's a really big fan of this one. My grandparents love this movie, uh, and it's A Perfect World, which was kind of like the first movie I ever saw where Kevin Costner, you know, played anything other than like the leading roles I was kind of used to him playing. In this one, he plays kind of like an anti-hero. Um, he's on the run from the law, but he takes in this kid and kind of relates to him, and the kid kind of finds a father and uh, Kevin Costner, but at the same time, he's still, you know, a fugitive from the law and a dangerous, you know, killer. And then you've got like Clint Eastwood, you know, who's trying to track him down. It's just really funny and it's emotional. It's sad and it's just got a lot to offer. And uh, this is the kind of movie that I normally don't like that I really enjoy. And it's set, I think, like in the late 1950s or something like that. I'm not really for sure the date. And it's directed by Clint Eastwood also. But yeah, um, just a really interesting movie. If you ever get a chance, definitely check out The Perfect World. Uh, this movie here was the inspiration for me to actually think of this. I had this movie on my mind today for whatever reason. I've always enjoyed it. I saw this at the theaters also another 20 years ago. Uh, but this movie is called uh, Pacific Heights. It's got Michael Keaton in it, and Michael Keaton plays a, like a villain. And it's a couple... Uh, this couple up here at the top, Melly Griffith and um, Melly Griffith and Matthew Modine. Yeah, uh, they end up investing their nest egg into like this little, like uh, multifamily, you know, townhouse type uh, place in uh, San Francisco. And then they end up trying to rent it out, and they need the rent money to help pay for the mortgage, and it's really kind of stressful, but they're trying to get themselves going in life, and what they end up doing instead is they end up getting Michael Keaton instead, and Michael Keaton ends up being a very unruly tenant, and they have a lot of trouble with him, and he kind of uses the law against them. It's really good. It's kind of a drama, suspense, thriller, and to see Michael Keaton in that role was amazing. This next movie here I'm talking about is one that I saw also about 20 years ago, and that is Madonna Truth or Dare. This is when Madonna is doing the uh, Blonde Ambition tour. You don't necessarily have to be a big Madonna fan. I'm not really a humongous 
fan, but uh, I like her stuff okay. This is a kind of behind the scenes documentary and it's talking about Madonna, you know, on tour and all the things she has to go through in all the different cities. And then it also has all her personal drama in her life. She At that time, she was kind of uh, seeing Warren Beatty. Uh, they'd done the Dick Tracy movie together. And it's just, it's kind of a time capsule for what Madonna was like at that time. So I really enjoy it. Next one I'm going to talk about is, I'm going to try to go a little faster here, is RKO 281. And this is a movie that's talking about, um, HBO did this, and it's about Citizen Kane. And it's how Orson Welles was able to achieve such a masterpiece of a film at a young age. And how much he had to buck the system, you know, in order to get the, the studios to actually let him do this movie. And it's quite interesting. Uh, it's another one that has Melanie Griffith in it. I think this is the third, um, second, second movie that... That Melanie Griffith's been in. I don't know why. Lee Shriver and James Cromwell are probably the big ones. John Malkovich is in this too, but James Cromwell is really interesting as um, uh, Hearst, William Randolph Hearst. But uh, yeah, if you get a chance, definitely check this out, especially have, if you have any interest in older films or if you've ever seen Citizen Kane and you just kind of, you know, are more interested in how that came about. Uh, the next movie I'm going to talk about is a movie that I kind of stumbled across in the early 2000s. And that's a, The Salton Sea. Uh, and this, to me, is probably one of the last big movies that Val Kilmer did in my mind. Like, I really enjoyed this. Uh, but this is a movie about a guy who goes through well, quite a bit, and um, it kind of won't tell you what his backstory is. You just kind of slowly have to like watch it. But um, it's about a guy who ends up, pretty much running with a crowd of people that are addicted to drugs. It has to do with uh, methamphetamines. And um, it's it's just edited together really weird. And it's funny and it's sad. And it's got lots of like really cartoonishly strange characters. But yeah, if you ever get a chance, definitely check out The Salton Sea from Dalton Kilmer. I'm going to try to go a little faster here. This is Boiler Room. Uh, this is probably a movie that would be a little bit more popular today than it was back, you know, in uh, 99 or whatever. It has to do with uh, young people trying to come up in the stock market game and trying to get rich. And um, Vin Diesel, this is one of his earliest movies. He'd done this right after... Um, Saving Private Ryan. Uh, but yeah, um, Giovanni Ribisi is in this, and he's really good. And it's about a kid that he thinks that's what his future is going to be, is in the stock market and kind of getting to see how crazy that life is and how fast you can make a lot of money and what it really takes to be a stockbroker. But yeah, a very good movie. Uh, if you ever get a chance, it's a lot of fun. Boiler Room. Uh, the next one is Death Trap. I've talked about this before in another movie and like movies from the 80s that are forgotten. It's got Michael Caine and uh, Christopher Reeve and um, uh, Dylan Cannon, of course. And this is more like a play and it has them set up in uh, just a few different rooms, just a few different characters. And it's a murder mystery, but it, it is also about writing a murder mystery. Really interesting. There's a weird dynamic between the characters. That's all I'm going to say. And you'll just have to check it out to see it. But if you ever see that one cheap, I've always enjoyed it. It's a very strange movie, but Death Trap. Last one I'll talk about is Matchstick Men. Uh, Nicolas Cage is kind of those mo uh, one of those people like Val Kilmer. This is one of the very last movies that I really remember watching him in that I really enjoyed. Um, he plays a guy who has... I guess a lot of little bitty um, neurotic, you know, it borderline psychotic, but uh, he has a lot of neuroses. Uh, and uh, everything kind of bothers him. You know, like the guys have to wash their hands a hundred times or they have to vacuum or they have to do this, they have to do that. He's a guy that has to live like that and he's a con man. It is just hilarious. And uh, Sam Rockwell, this is probably the first movie I remember watching him in that I really started to realize how good of an actor he is. And he plays the guy that's kind of like his partner. But that's just pretty much it. Uh, you just have to check it out. The way Nicolas Cage plays that character is a nervous wreck, and it's awesome. Um, I'm running out of time here. I don't know what the time restraints are on this collab channel, but I'll just say if you guys get a chance, check those out. These are all snapper cases that uh, I don't really hate. I'll just say that. It's hard to really love a snapper case, but I love these movies. They're all really fun. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say goodbye here, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you again next time. Talk to you later. Bye.